As the jostle for the highly coveted position continues, we examine the qualities of who would steer Nigeria's ship away from the ethnic, religious and political crisis it is faced with. And the third force movement adopts Labour Party for the 2023 elections. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. The primaries for the 2023 presidential elections are already here and political parties are preparing to nominate their candidates. It is the time to examine the potential prospects of who we are looking at to mount the bid for presidency. The Southern and Middle Belt Leaders Forum has insisted that zoning and rotation of presidency of Nigeria are fundamental to the future existence of the country and faulted what it called obvious schemes by two main political parties, which are the PDP and the APC, to zone its presidency to the north. Meanwhile, the Northern Elders Forum has forced the clamor for major political parties in the country to zone their 2023 presidential tickets to the south, saying that it would result to damage that the north would not accept. Well, joining us to discuss this is Director of Publicity, Northern Elders Forum, Hakim, Dr. Hakim Baba Ahmed. And of course, also joining us is the Acting Chairman of Bayelsa Elders Forum, Chief Thompson Okoruti. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Doctor, let me start by taking you back to 2015. Um, just before the 2015 elections, while campaigns were ongoing, um, we heard more of people saying that, you know, the 2020, 2015 elections was going to be a game changer. It was going to be that election that would steer the ship of Nigeria in the right direction. We heard those kinds of rhetorics. Um, but then here we are seven years down the line. We don't necessarily know if we really can hold on to that assertion. And now it seems we seem to be hearing the same kind of you know, rhetoric that, oh, whoever we choose would decide the future of Nigeria based on the fact that we are experiencing all kinds of shaking, whether it be in the north, the south, I mean, literally everywhere, including the southeast. Um, can you really say that that statement that you know, is being thrown around is something we can hold on to in picking a leader come 2023? Uh, is this my question? Yes. Uh, well, first, thank you for inviting me to your program. Um, 2015 uh, was supposed to have been a watershed. Um, it, uh, it was, uh, by all the indications on the ground, we supported President Buhari because we thought he was better than President Jonathan, uh, or he was going to do better than President Jonathan, and, and that's why everybody was so excited. Um, uh, literally, we thought it was going to represent regime change. Um, and, uh, and that's why we supported President Buhari. It turned out to be a watershed, but uh, in the negative sense of the world, the country is a lot worse seven years down the road. Um, President Buhari has not delivered on any of his promises. In fact, on the contrary, we are worse off security-wise. There is more corruption in the land than we think. We thought there would ever be under any president, not to talk of a president that came to power on the back of uh, fighting corruption. The economy is in a mess, uh, worse than it has ever been. Uh, and so, um, uh, yes, it was, it was, we, we had hoped it was going to be watershed. It has turned out to be a, a terrible um, negative uh, turn of events. Uh, poor governance, misrule, insensitivity on the part of the uh, president elected to be the, um, the, the, the savior of the nation, so to speak. Hmm. This is one of the reasons why we have insisted that we should be very careful this time. Um, if we made mistakes in 2015 in believing that um, uh, an individual who comes forward with an image of a reformer was good enough to be uh, our president, we should, have, we should learn our lessons from President Buhari. We shouldn't make that mistake again this time. So you're saying that we were more, uh, we were looking more at, I mean, because you see, every time somebody is being picked, we look at the antecedents of a person. 
we look at you know a trail of what the person has done if he's been a trailblazer in whatever um, he's he or she has done. Uh, so are you telling us that we made a mistake judging President Buhari from his past, being that many had said that you know his past when he was the head of state he was strict and many put their trust in the fact that he would be able to fight corruption, being a no-nonsense person. But I want to ask you, what do you think changed? Was it the man who changed? Or was it us who thought that the man was capable of doing the job and he was not capable? I think, uh, I'll be honest here, yeah. I think uh, we who supported him were the people who made the mistake rather than the person. Um, he didn't change. Um, it turned out that President Buhari had always just wanted to be president. Um, and, uh, and the governance was not his priority. Uh, there were difficult decisions to make. There was no time to make those decisions. He took all his time to make the wrong decisions. And he allowed the country to drift when he should, ex when he should have exercised um, um, a firm grip on, on, on the nation, um, governed with sensitivity, inclusiveness, uh, uh, some level of empathy and, uh, and, and lead, literally lead uh, rather than just simply delegate responsibility. Mm -hmm. So we, it turned out that um, many of us who supported him were wrong. Um, he wasn't. Uh, and it turned out that he just wanted to be president. And, uh, and as far as we were concerned, that, that was all it. Uh, you talk about uh, image. Uh, I think if, if, you are, if you are looking for uh, a nail to hang on the uh, President Buhari mistake, um, and whether it was real or not, you have to hang it on the rocks that was uh, created by the PDP and, uh, um, for, from 1999. The PDP misgoverned this country um, and created the basis for which uh, the people were desperate enough to trust someone like President Buhari, who, yes, in his first time of coming, um, was extremely unpopular. People said he took all the wrong decisions. He was hard, he was unyielding, he was um, insensitive. But they, they saw someone who, had, who, was, um, uh, who wasn't corrupt. Um, he had an exercise, he was a governor, he was a minister of petroleum resources. He was um, a, a general in the military. Um, he didn't have uh, 100 houses, he didn't have billions. And he was a man who was consistent. He said, give, give me Nigeria and I'll fight corruption. I'll read it of corruption. Give me Nigeria, I'll fight uh, insecurity. Give me Nigeria and I'll get our young people jobs. And um, contrasting with, the, with Jonathan, who then had the disadvantage of being in power, and he'd been in power since, uh, I think, 2009, uh, and, and, and he was doing very badly. So um, it, it was easy to choose Buhari against um, Jonathan. But uh, you wouldn't know the mistake you make sometimes until the person you choose is actually in power and then the true character of the person shows. Uh, one would wonder if, um, you know, we keep making this, um, like you said, mistakes by choice. Because it looks like we, every time we have a new leader, we tend to say, oh, maybe the guy who we thought was bad could, uh, would actually be better. I mean, we keep saying, people even go as far as the Obasanjo era to say, oh, when during the Obasanjo's era, we were able to do this and that, uh, as opposed to now. So now we're here in 2022, getting ready for 2023, and we've seen many people who have thrown their hats into the ring saying they want to lead this country. And most of which we already know where they're coming from. We've seen them lead in different capacities in this country. So I don't know if we should be talking about the persons or we should be talking about Nigerians, we the people, uh, and the choices that we are supposed to make. So I'll put, pose a question to you, sir. What do you think that Nigeria needs at this point in time? Because the North is saying, well, we don't necessarily need zoning. The Southeast and the South-South is saying, we want zoning. It's our time. We should be able to um, you know, take the lead in this presidential race. But what do you think, as an elder statesman, the country needs to deal with the issues that we have on all fronts. Because I always say that if you, if you were to put a, a compass and every, anywhere the compass pointed in Nigeria, you would see that we're facing all kinds of problems, whether it be ethnic, religious, uh, terrorism, whatever it is. What do we need right now to deal with the issues that we have on, the, on our plate? What we need is uh, to learn from the past. It, it's vital that we learn um, what has happened to this country in the last 20 years, since 1999. 
um, and, and then and then find the kind of person who would provide the solutions to to some of those problems that have become manifest. Um, the first one is we need a genuinely generally Nigerian president, not a, an ethnic president, not a regional president, not uh, somebody defined by his faith, but a, a Nigerian president who um, would be elected by all Nigerians in a free and fair election, who would have a solid record of achievement and com um, competence and experience behind him, and the kind of Nigerian who shows the level of uh, commitment and sensitivity to deal with uh, issues of insecurity, all the way from Borno to um, Oyo, the, um, um, and uh, deal with the issue of the Southeast that is uh, falling apart because of the activities of IPO. We want a Nigerian president who would uh, who would po not polarize the country, but bring it together. It was, we want a Nigerian president who would build bridges and, and command respect. We want a Nigerian president who would rebuild institutions, public service, the economy. Um, we want a Nigerian who would be humble. We want a Nigerian who would not allow himself to be corrupt or allow corruption around. Literally, we need a president who is entirely different from a lot of the people that we had um, in power since 1999. Uh, and now they come from everywhere. Uh, everywhere you go, that you can find someone who fits that bill, which is the reason why we make the case. Don't regionalize or uh, localize the source of the presidency. Throw it open. Every Nigerian needs to feel that whoever becomes president is his or her uh, person. Um, when, you, when you create an ethnic uh, um, toga around a president, uh, the, the, the possibility that he or she might actually behave as if he represents a particular part of the country. Uh, those, those possibilities are real and they are, they are very dangerous. More than anything else, we don't want the future to become a whole stage of the past. If we made mistakes in the past, but then there are people, people but doctor, there are the people, basis, doctor, there yeah, are people but, who are saying, I'm sorry to talk over you. Um, there are people who say that, why didn't we think of this before now? Why is it that it's the time of the South uh, that we're beginning to wax lyrical about the kind of person that we need to lead us and, um, you know, Nigerianizing our presidents and in instead of regionalizing them. And I don't know if we really do that, but then we also have the conversation or the debate about, um, you know, federal character, whether it be written in the constitution or not when it comes to zoning, that we're saying that, look, Nigeria might be very diverse and for power to go round so everybody has a and this is not me saying it. I'm just saying this is what the, the, uh, the arguments that are being made. So that everybody has a chance at it. Why? Yeah, I why understand. Was this, you ask, uh, yes. why, why was this not considered in the first place? When it's yes. the turn, what, our turn, when is the South? Where, where do you get the idea that it is the turn of the South? Is it written in the Constitution? Well, I just where, mentioned, where, but I, where, I just mentioned that. that idea? When people say, like you did now, when it, you only talk about this, when it's our turn. How does it become anybody's turn? It's not in, in the constitution. It's not in, in, in the Nigerian constitution. There's nothing anywhere that says that um, a president must come from a particular part of the country. The constitution is very clear. Parties would choose candidates, voters would, would vote, and uh, whoever gets uh, the requirement to be president will be president. That's, that's the fundamental. But has that been the modus nothing... operandi before now? Because. We... Political parties will tell you, especially the PDP who came up with this idea of zoning, uh, and that it, it was a gentleman's agreement, but many have followed it. Even though there are those who would argue that, you know, at some points with the Jonathan experience, uh, there was a shift. But the argument is still that if, the, if it's not in the Constitution, how come it's being followed up until now? Uh, being followed by who? By PDP. By and, and it's being followed by default. Let me remind you that uh, the only party uh, that um, in introduced and codified uh, zoning between North and South uh, is, is PDP. And PDP breached even that, its own rules, um, over and over and over again. Yeah, I would like to remind you about the quarrels in 20, 2014, 2015, which in a way created the, um, the basis upon which uh, the APC became uh, the ruling party. So. Um, th this, this business of APC, why is the zoning now? Is it not the same PDP that, um, that through tickets is open? Should this country become slave to PDP's um, 
uh, uh, failures and limitations. PDP is only one party in this country. It's not the only party that determines what Nigeria is doing. Maybe PDP itself doesn't respect its own rules. So how, how, how is it possible that what PDP did or didn't do or subverted now has become a mantra for everybody? We are not, the, you see, people make confuse two things. Nigeria is a diverse, complex country. It is a good thing that we should allow inclusiveness. That's what we should allow. Every community in this country needs to feel part of whoever becomes whatever government is formed. So whatever, that is why the, the, um, the federal, character, federal character provisions are, are there. Yet we single out one office, the president's office, and say, oh, it must be, it's ours. It's not. Mm. The, the, law, the law does not allow any president, no matter where he comes from, to run a government to the exclusion of others. Okay. Even, okay, so even the Buhari, the, you hear about this complaint that he's running a northern government. It's not true. I'm not a fan of President Buhari, but it's not true that he's running a government. There are ministers from all parts of this country. There are public officers from all parts of the country. The mistake we make is in thinking, unless we have a president from our, our own president. And the, the thing about it is that nobody is nobody's president. He's elected entirely by Nigeria. So even if he drops from the heavens, so long as he is the president, he doesn't belong to anybody. And he shouldn't belong to anybody. Okay. That is the important Okay, well, we're, we're being joined now by the um, acting chairman of Biosa Elders Forum, Chief Thompson Okorite. Um, Mr. Okorite, I don't know if you've been following the conversation, but let's talk about this issue of power shift. Uh, you've heard Dr. Um, Baba Ahmed talking about the fact that we need a Nigerian president, and it doesn't matter where he comes from, uh, that all that matters is someone who's able to lead the country in the right direction. What are your thoughts? Well, I've been in the political terrain for about 45 years. And the zoning became intense right from the Second Republic. And because of the enormity of the country, because of the number of ethnic groups, and because there is need for inclusiveness, and because even the Constitution says, at some point, the grand constitution of the Federal Republic, I can't remember the section now. If you had given me some notice before, I would have quoted it. That the federal government should do business in such a way that all parts of the country have been given a sense of belonging. That is silent zoning. How do you do it? So it has been brought north-south, and then in the, in the, in the, in the uh, two zones, you cannot do micro-zoning. That's how it has been. But some people say that we are developing and we should get to a point where we should go for consensus. But I do not think that uh, that is the best for us now because uh, there, there could be a case where there are competing competences. We are looking for the best person to rule this country. And capacity is involved. Honesty is involved. A track record is involved. If you put all of this together, you might have some three, four people in one party that have the same qualifications. So where do you go from there? In NPN time, we, were, we, we had it very easy. He said, look, it's your turn. So you, you now go into your zone and produce the, the candidate from the party for the general elections. Now, right now, the major parties in the country, PDP and APC, are watching each other. They shift dates up and down. They want to know who is the first to produce a candidate so that they can use that to set their own uh, uh, program. Uh, uh, PDP is going for con convention on Saturday, while APC zone is coming later. So whoever is produced by PDP will now, to a large extent, determine what APC will do. That's my reading of the situation. But what, so, it, it, makes me, it makes me wonder, I mean, because you've painted a clear picture of what you think the political parties are doing. But I want to ask, why do you, what do you think is at the core of this? Aside from the fact that these parties want to win, I'm sure that every political party out there wants to win. But then where does the average Nigerian come in? 
because I want again to go back to what Mr. Kimbaba Ahmed said. Nigerians put their trust in President Buhari, and you talked about also, um, you know, looking at the track record of a person. Nigerians judged President Jonathan uh, from his, uh, sorry, President Buhari from his track record. They hoped and trusted that he would be honest in fighting corruption, in putting an end to the terrorism that we're, and, uh, that we're actually, um, you know, faced with, and also to, you know, give us employment, as he said, because he campaigned on these three things. But here we are in the seventh year of his, um, you know, presidency. We really can't say that he's been able to do that for us. So again, um, we see a lot of uh, these men who are saying they will do this, they will do that. Does track record alone help us to pick the people that we want to pick? Again, the average Nigerian is faced with all of these candidates and not necessarily knowing who he or she might pick, being that we're not involved in the picking. The delegates are the ones who pick these candidates for elections. So we're only at the mercy of whoever the party picks. But then it looks like uh, a game of chess for these parties. Where does the average Nigerian come in, especially those who are asking uh, for zoning? Well, I agree with you that um, uh, Buhari was elected in the business of a track record. But that is not what it's turning out to be. The country is in a mess. And so uh, that is why I did not call track record alone. I named three other uh, standards. There is, there is um, talked about competence. A leader for this country must be a competent manager of affairs. And then it should be honest and have fear of God or Allah. So that you can take this country to the best level, not next level. I therefore think that the combination of uh, qualifications, because if you look at the constitution, there are qualifications, there are also disqualifications. These things have to be properly positioned so that this time around we can get it right. The only thing that is not very clear now is what consensus would take us to. Will it produce the best person? I think it's another experiment that is coming. Even though at this age of our country, we are, we are supposed to stop experimenting and go for ground rules that are constant. Like Clinton said the other day that they came to the country, he said Nigeria should build strong institutions, not strong men. And I share that view. Interesting. I, I want to go back to um, Dr. Baba Ahmed. Um, Dr. Ahmed, we see um, that lately the, the, the news has been, you know, talking about delegates within parties. And we, we have seen a lot of people have termed these delegates as, um, you know, um, the guys who smile to the bank after each of these primaries. Again, how, how much hope do we have in these delegates to pick the people who are right for the position to be flag bearers of political parties as opposed to who gives or who pays the most money? Uh, I have a... I'm afraid I, I'm going to say something that I think Nigeria is still haven't woken up to. Um, I, I, I think that we, we don't realize that the, the nation and our entire destiny as a whole country uh, has not become a victim of a particular class of politicians who know how to tweak us, who, um, who have created a, themselves into a ruling class. They just keep, keep simply recycling themselves, recycling the system, exploiting its weaknesses, getting us to fight each other, and just, just simply replacing each other um, and playing a game uh, with, our, with our lives, with our welfare, with our security, with our our love for each other and, and for our, the future of our children. Look, nothing really substantive has changed in this country. Um, PDP has been in power from 1999 until uh, 2015. APC took over. Now, if you look into APC, you are likely to find that about 60 or 70% of the people in APC were actually PDP people in the past. If you go back to PDP, if you go into PDP, you are likely to find a lot of APC people have defected there. Basically, Nigerians are captive of two parties 
that recognize the fact that they can only retain power if one, they create enemies out of each, out of all of us by creating all this business that it's us, it's us, it's us. There is really nothing, absolutely no difference between the, 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 the poor man in, in, in Oka and the poor man in Gombe. That is the honest truth. And yet they will tell you, if we have an evil president, then every problem that the Igbo have, I'm, I'm only using the Igbo as an example. This, this business of ours, ours is, is, is pervasive everywhere, including Northerns. They will tell you a Northern, a Northern, Northern president is going to protect a Northern interest. Yeah. And I, we ask a question, which Northern interest? Is it the, the bandits, the kidnappers, the, 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 um, the insurgents that are going on? So you, you need to understand, and Nigerians need to understand, we have become captives of a game that is being played by the people who are in two camps. PDP and APC. And the issue that you raise here, the, 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 the corruption involved in the way they run their parties, the, the delegate system, um, it, it's exactly the way they've been doing this in 20, since 1999. It's only getting the country worse. A handful of people, literally, a handful of people decide who becomes a candidate. Then they line us up, full, uh, fill us up with um, uh, venomous propaganda, regionalism, about ethnicity, about faith, and then we go and vote for either, either of them. I, I will, I'm praying one day before I die, I would see in Nigeria where the masses, you and I, the ordinary people who, who have a lot to share, we're poor, we're insecure, we're desperate, our children are, are, are losing faith in this country, they're either leaving the country or they're living honest lives, I hope to God will wake up and realize that we've actually been victims of a game of a ruling class, which is what they are. They are in PDP, they are in APC. And what is important is, what, why do we need to believe that the best Nigerian can only come from these two parties? They are just political parties. Why don't we look outside these two parties? There are other parties that are quite likely to fill better candidates. There are not producing leaders through billions, unless you spend billions and billions and billions um, uh, delegates and all these things. Anybody who spends 10 billion, 20 billion naira, anybody, and I say anybody, just to convince a handful of delegates to elect to, to give him or her a ticket, I'm telling you that person is going to steal our commonwealth. Interesting. He's not going to become our president. He's going to become a president for, him, for himself. Hmm. So we need to break the stranglehold of these two parties around us. If we don't do that, all this business of is our turn and uh, you have to go through an old uh, antiquated and discredited system of delegates, that's why President Buhari refused to, to agree to uh, indirect primaries. Okay. That's why they refused to tinker out with the electoral process. Okay, Qu quickly, because we're almost out of time. Um, Chief Okorosi, I'm coming to you now to as we wrap up this conversation. How do we blur these lines that are dividing us? Because the average person will tell you that Nigeria is divided along ethnic and religious lines. And now politics has been introduced into it and it's, you know, it's deepening the more. And just like the doctor has said, how do we do this within ourselves? Because he's painted a picture saying that the political parties are the problem. So if a handful of us understand this, how do, does that same handful help the larger majority to begin to look within and start looking at ways that we can better the loss of Nigeria? How do we go about that? Well, I, I see uh, my brother Adam wasting his saliva talking so much because many of the people he's talking to are deaf. They are very deaf. And I tell you that whichever way you look at it, if you say political problem, parties are the problem, who are the people in the political parties? Are they not the same Nigerians? Now, those political parties that we castigate are a product of the society. Now, what I think that we need to look at properly is a reorganization of the political system. There are no solid parties. There are no ideologies. You cannot distinguish one from the other. They produce people that do not even know their own party constitution and the manifesto of their own party. So the political parties have to be properly reformed. Like the other day I was asking the question, when they come with all these millions to buy forms 
and the, and the parties at that point are saying that you have not been paying dues. Where is the system that allows a member of a party to pay its monthly dues? Whereas in the card, in the membership card, there's, there's columns, there are 12 columns. You're supposed to be paying your fees. The, what I'm saying in short is that the parties need reorganization. Mm. And if the religious uh, and ethnic thing will not disappear in a hurry. It will not disappear in a hurry. But when we are able to produce a strong, a leader that loves the country, not loves the part only the party comes from, and tries to provide a level playing ground, because what is even bringing about in ethnicity is that somebody from somewhere, because he is president, everything must go to his side. That is what causes the problem. Hmm. We need a leader that must provide a level playing ground, make oh. sure that it's fair to all. Okay. Well, unfortunately, time is not on our side. I want to say thank you to Dr. Kim Baba Ahmed. Uh, he is of the Northern Elders Forum. And, of course, uh, we have uh, been speaking also with Chief Thompson Okoriti. Uh, he is of the Bielsa Elders Forum. Thank you so much, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be talking with Professor Pat Tatomi as he talks to us about the third force and the merger with the Labour Party. Stay with us.